Okay, I will uh, make use of, uh, so the idea is already presented by Professor Karandikar and, and to some extent uh, Professor Krizan, uh, perhaps in a slightly different way. So let me uh, tell you about the things that I'm interested in, and, and this is also related to the uh, talk by, uh, on, on weather prediction, this variational view. Um, and what, I'm, what I've been interested in for quite a number of years is, is that although in filtering and control we talk about, the word, we use the word information, but at least information theory by and large or a formal view of information and how that might enter into filtering and control has been notably, ac notably absent. So that's one of the reasons. So is there a kind of an information theoretic view of, of filtering or even data assimilation? So that's one. The second thing is that uh, I think there are very close connections between what's happening in statistical mechanics, in particular non-equilibrium statistical mechanics. And I think uh, there's, a, in my view, a golden opportunity to contribute there by bringing in the viewpoints of filtering and stochastic control that is intervening, right, in, say, a thermodynamic system. Uh, by appropriately making measurements and extracting information about the system and then using that information to modify the thermodynamic system. And, uh, and I was absolutely surprised that, uh, although I, I'll mention that a little bit later, I wrote a paper with my colleague Nigel Newton in 2005, which hasn't been noticed by physicists as far as I can see. But there's a huge literature now in, 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 in amongst very good physicists using ideas of filtering and stochastic control in doing exactly bringing that into non-equilibrium statistical mechanics. And so you, you'll get uh, some view of that here, OK? So first thing is uh, <laughs> you will hear again uh, Bayesian inference uh, with slightly different notation, but, but very, very similar to what uh, Professor Karandikar uh, talked about. So let, let me remind you, uh, so if you are in a, right, I mean, what turns out is, is, is the, in, in some sense, the kalyan poor formula is, is a fancy way of writing the Bayes' theorem. Uh, well, what is the Bayes' theorem? That if you had finite, say, random variables, then the, the Bayes' theorem says, and the idea here is x is sort of hidden or latent or not available to you, and y is you get information about x, probabilistic information. And then the, the Bayes theorem says, well, that's a prior P of x times the likelihood, right? P of y. Well, I'll, I'll write the, I don't want to write it formally. Times the likelihood function. And everything that I'm talking about, you have a full probabilistic description. I mean, that's OK. And in practice, very often, you will not have that. By full probabilistic distribution, I mean what you are given is, say, the joint distribution of p of x, y, and hence sort of p of x and p, y. So it's full probabilistic distribution. And in practice, you will not have full probabilistic distribution. There will be parameters, maybe non-parametric 
descriptions of X or, or some kinds of parameterization, and less so perhaps with respect to observation. Okay, that's that's important. And if you want to, if you want to give a probabilistic description, you have to describe the joint dense joint distribution. There's, you can't get away from that in some sense. Okay. Now, so this part is is a is an abstract Bayes theorem similar to what uh, Professor Karandika pre pre presented, uh, excepting I'm, I want to make explicit the connection to Gibbs distribution. So, uh, so l l let me tell you what Gibbs distribution is and, and abstractly how this is related to statistical mechanics. In classical statistic mechanics states, the states are going to be probability distribution, probability measures on some space, say, P of omega. And observables are functions of omega, right? Say, maybe real valued functions or something like that. And what you're, what you're interested in is computing statistics. So that, what that means is that you're interested in computing for given functions f, integral of f d mu. What we are interested in, and I think this is going to become clear in uh, Ramon's talk tomorrow, what we are interested in is not probability measures, but conditional probability measures. And observables would be integration with respect to conditional probability measures. But in order to compute these conditional probability measures, or, or our observables or estimates right here are integration with respect to conditional probability measures. But in order to uh, compute those, you have to know the conditional distribution, right? So the, the conditional distribution is really like a universal sufficient statistic. Whatever estimate you wish to compute, you can get it from the conditional distribution. Okay? So that's the main thing. And the, the point is that the change from studying distributions and you know, statistics based on observables to conditional distributions and, and computing, if you like, conditional statistics is a very big change. It's, uh, I, I think it's only now that we realize how big a change that is. Because lots of things, for example, studying sequences of random variables and so on. And properties that you expect to be true very often will not be true in conditional distribution. Okay. So a, a good goal might be take the book of Georgi's book on Gibbs measures and phase transitions, redo it for conditional distributions. Not everything can be done, but certain things I think can be done. Okay. All right. So that's and now uh, there's a characterization of Gibbs distribution as, as a variational principle. I mean, let me describe this in a finite case. Okay, so typically, so uh, Gibbs distributions, variational characterization. It's not the Gibbs variational principle, which is a far deeper su subject. And if I have time, I'll say something about that. So typically, you will have some finite probability space omega, which would typically be e to the s, where s is some set of sites. And you have a random variable sitting at the set of sites taking values in e. But everything is finite here, finite set. And then on this 
say, configur configuration space, you have a notion of, of some energy function or something like that, right? And so typical energy function would be the Ising model, which would be some sort of a quadratic function of the, the random variables, for example. So, so abstractly, you, you have a notion of an energy function, H, I'm using H to denote as Hamiltonian. And the Gibbs measure, nu of omega, is exponential of minus H of omega, normalized, right? Sum over omega belonging to omega, exponential of minus H of omega, right? So this, the notation for this is usually z. It's the partition function. And one of the important, if you like, thermodynamic quantities is the log of the partition function z. In some sense, if you, if you have a handle on log of z, then you have, have a handle on all kinds of thermodynamic variables, OK? So this is what's a Gibbs distribution. Now, the reason why, say in the finite case, one of the reasons why a Gibbs distribution is interesting, because in a finite case, Gibbs distributions, at least for non-degenerate probability measures, is equivalent to a Markov field. OK, so what is a Markov field? Right, we know what a Markov chain is, right? I mean, you have a chain, xt, then the, the, say the, the conditional probability of xt given the whole pass is the same as the conditional probability of xt given just xt minus 1. That's the Markov condition. We'll think now of a two-sided Markov condition. The conditional probability of x given xt minus 1 and xt plus 1 is the same as the conditional probability of xt given, given the, the rest. Well, general, so, so think of these, these two, the two-sided xt minus 1 as xt plus 1 as neighbors of xt, right? So Markov field is, if you can well, generalize this notion of a neighborhood, right? So the Markov field is a conditional probability of xt say, given its neighbors, is the same as the conditional probability of xt given its, its complement, right? And there's a basic result of, of Hammersley and Clifford, which says that Gibbs distributions are equivalent to Markov random fields, i.e., there's a given a Markov random field, namely sort of the specification of the field, then there's a way of passing to the Gibbs distribution, and vice versa. Okay. Now, what is of interest to us is, yeah. Something like that. One way is, is, is easy, but the other side is more difficult. No, no. Uh, but in, I'm in the finite case, so I need non-degeneracy of some kind. Yeah. OK, so now, so let mu be some other measure on omega. Okay. Now I define two quantities. Um, mu of h, so that's the average energy. Right, which is the sum of right, mu of omega h of omega. And I define the entropy <coughs> of 
right? The entropy is some gross way of associating a measure of uncertainty related to a random variable. So this is the entropy. And the so-called free energy call it f of mu, is the average energy, namely mu of h, minus h of mu. So it's called the free energy. I mean, that's the energy that's available to do work. So you have some thermodynamics. By the way, I, sh I should mention that, th that this is a description of a thermodynamic system in thermal equilibrium. Okay? Right? Remember, the news are states. And so the free energy is the energy that's available to you to do work. And, and the, the proposition is that nu minimizes f of mu. And the minimum is achieved in this, in this case, it's unique in any way. And so the, the point is that the free energy, the minimization of free energy is obtained by the Gibbs distribution, by the system being in thermodynamic equilibrium. OK? Uh, the proof of this is very easy. Are you assuming a specific cost for the Hamiltonian At the moment, no. Yeah, okay, I, 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 I didn't want to, I didn't want to get into the, yeah. So, so, so for, forget the Markov property for the moment. I thought, I was trying to say that the reason why Gibbs distributions are, are of interest is that the Markov properties in some sense Okay, so in, in the modeling state, it's easier to give energy functions than, than given all the transition kernels or a specification. So, so at, at the moment, at the moment, there is no measurement. At the moment, you take this to be definition of Gibbs distribution with this Hamiltonian, if you like, and that has this variational principle. Yeah, but then you are giving a property that is minimizing the entropy, and is that valid? I didn't say minimize the entropy. Minimizing the free energy. I mean, the point is this, okay, and I mean, this, well, I mean, the proof is that you look at f of mu plus log of z and show that it's not negative. I mean, when you compute this, this is exactly the relative entropy of mu with respect to mu, which is, right, expectation of mu log of mu over nu. And this is, gives me the chance to introduce this idea of relative entropy. Uh, and its properties, firstly, we know that h of mu nu is greater than or equal to zero. And h of mu nu equal to zero if and only if mu equals nu, and that is actually a convex function. Okay. In fact, in this computation we just you just really need the Jensen's inequality. Okay? All right. Now what I now want to say is that 
this is the main idea that the conditional distribution of two very uh, of between two very general random variables uh, the same framework as professor Karandikas that so suppose x and y are random variables taking values in some complete separable metric space what you need is is the existence of a sort of a regular conditional distribution uh, then the conditional distribution satisfies is corresponds to minimization of a free energy and I'll tell you what that free energy is okay any questions so far Oh, so I'm thinking of, so you have some set of sites, finite set, and at each site, you have a random variable taking values in E. So the, each of the S's functions from S to E. Yeah? Okay, so um, now, I was really interested in this problem because there's an old problem uh, uh, how much what time did I start So there are two classical problems. One is the Kalman filter. Which you've heard several times now what it is. Okay? So in this case you have some Gauss Markov process X and you have observations which are linear functions of X plus noise and given an observation sequence or an observation trajectory, you, ask, you have to compute the conditional distribution of X given the observations over some interval. And because, so that's going to be conditionally Gaussian, hence it's enough to describe its evolution of its mean and variance. Right? End of story. Right? That's, that's what the Kalman filter is. Now, you can generalize this as Professor Karandikar did, and he wrote down now evolution equations for the conditional distribution, and the, and if you assume it has a density, he also wrote down the evolution equation for the so-called unnormalized conditional density. Okay. Now, on the other hand, there is the, the linear quadratic problem, Right, which is this. And say, well, that you choose the controls U, say, in some L2 space of, say, Rd, to minimize. to minimize a quadratic functional, so integral from 0 to t, x t, right, scalar product, x t dt, plus integral 0 to t, say u of t, r u of t, dt, call this j of u, and you, of course, need Q semi-definite and R definite. And we know that, well known, that the optimal control U star of T is some, well, some Q 
of t, x star of t. It's linear, and k of t some uh, it's a matrix, right? M by it's a d by m matrix, and essentially k of t described in terms of uh, Riccati equation. And the Riccati equation, so is so it turns out that that you can get the solution of the Kalman filter problem, really the path space minimization problem, right, by solving an optimal control problem of the following type. So solution of Kalman filtering problem. So what you have to do is you have to solve a is And the cost is, sorry, these should be all some, uh, well, this is a tilde, if you like, and maybe a u tilde. And the cost function is y of t minus h x of t squared plus u of t squared dt. So the idea is that what you want to do is you want to track the observation as best as you can, but you have a constraint on the energy in some sense. Okay. And if you formally solve this problem, you'll get a trajectory, x star, right? So and that trajectory will be a random trajectory. It will have a measure, probability measure, on the space of trajectories. And that, in, in the Gaussian case, is going to be a, a Gaussian process. And hence, described by its mean and covariance. And the conditional mean, if you like, is the solution to the path space problem. And it's been speculated that this problem on, and so, right, uh, in, in some sense, yeah, this, the, the idea is that in some sense this solving the optimal control problem and solving the filtering problem are somehow dual to each other. In one case, you're, you're saying something about you want to shape the trajectories in some way. And in the other case, given the observations, right, you are trying to understand what's how, you know, what, what has happened to the, to the shape space. The, so, sorry, the shape of the trajectories. Now, it turns out that if we do the following, First, give a variational interpretation of Bayesian inference. And we want to do that really in the end in the situation where x, t, and y, t is a, a joint Markov process. And what I have in mind is x, t will have some dynamical description. 
and yt will be, say, some nonlinear functions of the x's plus noise. I mean, the, the model that uh, has been described several times. That's one. Two is that this variational principle will be really a free energy minimization. And really at the, so on the space of measures, right? Remember, we are trying to, we are trying to find the, the best, we are trying to find the conditional distributions, right? The best explanation that, tell, that describes x given, uh, given information about x through some observation mechanism. So that turns out to be a convex problem on the space of measures. And so there's a duality theory for convex programs. So duality comes into the picture. And what turns out is that this, this convex program, namely this free energy minimization, if you now introduce the dynamical structure or the Markov structure, and after what Professor Karandikar explained, a measure transformation, that turns out to be a stochastic control problem, and hence you can do dynamic programming. I mean, that's what the idea is, and I think what is rather pretty is that this is exactly the duality between relative entropy and logarithmic moment generating functions that plays an important role in the Donska Varadin theory of large deviations. Okay? Uh, so, and this duality is a sort of fenchel legend duality in infinite dimensional spaces. And, um, and involves a full machinery of stochastic control, etc. Okay, that's the scheme which I'm going to describe. But, but maybe you should understand, our, our, and, and that was the distinction between what was being done before. So here, everything is at the level of space of measures on path spaces. Right, or in the, in, as far as the estimation problem is concerned, it's the estimation of the whole path given the observations in the whole path and its variational characterization. Now you can look for estimates if you like, and an approximation scheme. Yeah, uh, w one one other comment is that. So, so this becomes a stochastic control problem. By the way, the stochastic control problem, it turns out that the optimal control is the gradient of the value function of dynamic programming, which is kind of interesting. And I think the, the, what is being done in, in approximate dynamic programming, so-called neural, neurodynamic programming, uh, machine uh, reinforcement learning. So, I mean, all that stuff could be now brought to bear to solve the, the stochastic control problems and various kinds of approximation things. Okay, so, so that's, that's the scheme. conditional distribution satisfies a free energy minimization problem. The optimal, the solution to the, to the optimization problem, the convex program, gives the conditional distribution. It's a conditional measure. It's a regular condition. 
So this is this variation problem has a unique solution. No, uh, no, no. Wait, wait a minute. There's a little bit of a confusion. So it's a Bayesian problem where the space x is say the space of continuous functions taking values. It's more like a Bayesian inversion inversion problem. It's like a more like a Bayesian inversion problem. Yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, if you have this, then you have everything. You can't, there's nothing else to, to do. So who's been doing? Yes, but as a byproduct of that, it solved the problem of the duality between stochastic control and filtering. In a precise sense. But but this also, I mean, clarifies all the mystery around maximum entropy and all of this in one setup. And a lot of what James is trying to say, I mean, I don't have time to do this. <coughs> but also, uh, I should mention, because this convex program has, has a dual problem which is actually an infinite dimensional control problem, and that gives you a handle on how to do with model uncertainties, which I don't have time to talk about. So maybe, I think I have 10 minutes, and so I'll... What? Ah, okay. Oh, I should mention one other thing that's very important. So where does information theory comes into the picture? Right, so in order to understand this conditional distribution, right, the, the, the state really, right, of the, which corresponds to the joint Markov process, what you really have to understand is the, the map from the initial state, which will typically will have some measure mu, and y zero t into this conditional distribution. Okay? So what's happening is initially all the information is contained in the initial state. And at time zero, there's, that's all the information. And then you're accumulating information, right, continuously, which is being transferred into the filter. Okay? So there is, there is a sort of a dynamical system here which transfers information from some initial storage into the filter itself. Now you can ask the question, well, is this transformation you know, does this corresponding to a dynamical system which is dissipative or conservative? Now, if, 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 you're, if you have to estimate the whole path, right? I mean, it, it's in an appropriate set in a conservative process. On the other hand, if you want to estimate the state, the so-called filtering problem at y zero t that's dissipative in, in the following precise sense that the filter stores information that it's needed in order to understand the present and the future of this probabilistic system and it dissipates information, historical information at a rate which is given by the so-called Fisher information 
So behind all of this is the relationship between fissure information and mutual information uh, in, a, in my view, in a rather intrinsic way. And so uh, the, I, I, I'll give you references. This is in, in my paper with Nigel Newton, which has appeared. They have, they have the Shannon, but they don't have this uh, information. They have the rate at which information is used. Yeah. Which is governed by the fission. So it, the, the good thing is this picture is completely in terms of the mutual information, which is an invariant quantity. It's, it's right. OK. So. Uh, set up is the following. So you have some probability space omega fp and you have two measurable spaces so these are going to be complete separable metric spaces. And you have a joint distribution, P of x, y, and marginals, say, P of x, P, y. OK? And so the hypothesis, one of the hypotheses is that, so there exists say, a sigma finite measure lambda y on y y such that p of x y is absolutely continuous with respect to p x cross lambda y. So this lambda y could be p y itself. Okay? And then So then I do like Q of x, y is, right, I mean, that's the rather negative derivative. And you need a technical condition of Q of x, y, the Q of x, y, P, x, D, x should be, I, I'll, I'll dispense with the, the technicalities. The important point is that if you write down now h of x, y equals minus log of q of x, y. So the q of x, y is really the likelihood. Right. Then you can write down the, the conditional distribution p of x, y. You can write down an abstract base formula outcome by outcome as integral of a exponential of minus h of x, y, p, x, b, x, normalized x. I mean, this is in some sense rewriting, if you like, but, but I mean, this is I think it's essentially the same base formula that uh, Karandika wrote down earlier. OK, so now, uh, so if you look at the the Look at the space of probability of P of, on P of x. And so look at the measures, say, P x tilde uh, 
and you have functions right so the measure the space of measurable functions if you like h of x with some technical conditions that which i will not write down and there are three quantities of interest one is the relative entropy right which is a measure of the in some sense the information gain of p of x tilde relative to p x hat and this has the convexity properties that i described before and then q is if i pick some function h tilde from this class h of x so that is really minus the log of exponential of minus h tilde p of x ds so that's the, the log of moment generating function okay and the notation i will use is that h tilde p x tilde is really integral of h tilde dpx tilde. By the way, this has an interpretation. If I, if, right, this is, so if you like, this h tilde corresponds to a likelihood for some, ob, some other observations, right, beyond the one that you actually have. Okay? And then what you can show is that if you like, I'll, I'll write one part of the proposition. That so I, I'm, I'm writing down what is the, the free energy. So the free energy is the relative entropy, right? Recall in the Gibbs variation principle, there are two terms. There's the entropy term and the average energy term, right? So what entropy gets replaced by is, is the relative entropy. I mean, entropy in, 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 in continuous setting is not a good thing to work with one should always work with relative entropy right this is the information contained in px tilde information gain relative to the the prior distribution p of x okay and the average energy now is plus Right? This is integral of h px tilde, so that's the average energy. So you minimize this over px tilde in p of x. This has a unique solution, and the unique solution is actually the conditional distribution. So the, the computation, I mean, two comments, so unique solution. Which is the conditional distribution. Yes. So, so this is the, I mean, this deals with the prior information. So this is the residual information that is contained in the observation as measured through the likelihood. There's a dual problem. The dual problem actually measures the distance between the conditional distribution and the prior distribution. 
And those two problems are conjugate convex function tools. Okay. So, I mean, what I'm trying to advocate also is, the, is that actually it's the variational characterization of Bayes' formula which turns out to be more important than you know, the Bayes' formula itself in the sense that, uh, for example, you, you may want to study some asymptotic behavior as, as you would typically do in an information theory problem. Okay. Now, so the question now remains is, now if you have a, if X is a Markov diffusion process, and if your observation is a nonlinear function of the Markov diffusion process, then it turns out that the, um, this part, after suitable measure transformation, is actually an energy term. It's a, it's a control energy term. And this part is this, this tracking term, namely integral of y minus hx squared. Yeah. By the way, also this is somehow related in the integral of y minus hx squared. Yeah. By the way, also this is somehow related, all this is related to uh, Dupuy and Ellis's work on, on large deviations from a stochastic control viewpoint. Okay. And what, to, to connect to the data simulation issue, if you like, what was being looked at is not the variational problem characterizing the conditional distribution, but so-called max, so-called so maximum a posteriori. Well, in continuous time, it's a little bit difficult. What the right? So what you would like to do is maximizing over x to get the maximum a posterior probability distribution. That's what, what was being computed in, uh, in, as I understand it, in current data simulation work. Um, I think I'll stop here. So I hope I've given you a view of what what would be oh okay so there are two yeah so there is a uh, so this is, uh, so there's a paper in SIAM Journal Control. I believe 2004. Uh, it's on my website. I think it's called, uh, this is joint paper with Nigel Newton. And it's called the variational interpretation of nonlinear estimation. And two is a paper in the Journal of Statistical Physics. Um, and it's called information also with Nigel Newton. And it's called information and entropy flow in the common Busey filter. So that describes this information and entropy flow. And how, in a certain sense, the common filter satisfies the second law of thermodynamics. You have a Dupuyo paper in the book series for Ben Sasson, I think. Yes, which yes. Is most pedagogical, I think, of all of them. <laughs> yes. Maybe um, would be a better reference. Duality, yeah. Uh, I don't have that in mind. By the way, I, I want to make one other comment that... It's like a, a pedagogical paper that yeah. Sanjoy wrote about this, and it's in some... Test ship or I don't I can't remember what it's called. But it's, 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 it's very... It starts at the much more elementary level with these research papers. Yeah. 
so one comment I want to make is that I think in data simulation, maybe Ram I think Ramon might talk about this, you, you have wide flexibility in introducing structure. For example, you may want to X maybe some space-time Markov structure. And that'll get, ref that will get reflected when you translate this abstract sort of variational principle into you know, the, the corresponding evolution equation in, in some way. I've never written this down. I mean, the nonlinear case is written down, so you can, you can, you can get it from. It's it's a, you can derive common physics. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that optimal control problem that I wrote down can be rigorously. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done it. That's, that's a little bit tricky. There's a technical issue there, which Well, there's a technical issue there because, I mean, when you do large deviations or, or, or yes, but the point is, you need something like when the noise goes to zero, some you know, it goes to a delta measure. But the small noise for. But the small noise case for stochastic control is worked out by yeah, when. That is the thing. Well, why is it different? Uh, I have a stochastic control interpretation of filter. Sorry? That's a hypothesis. Okay. Take a lambda y, which is py. Uh, so that shows existence. I mean, that's, that's part of the hypothesis. I mean, part of the hypothesis. Right, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, this problem is, is it has a full, you start with a full probabilistic description. 